show you a bit of a maybe or probably a petrified society, the LBK, so the linear pottery culture. On the other hand, I want to ask if our systems to deal with it, uh, so our typological systems, are somehow petrified too. If we try to describe something petrified, this is a petrified system. Right. Okay. Was soll ich zu drücken? So we forget this and change directly to LBK. So um, just in short for the non-neolithic researchers here, um, LBK uh, is uh, based on uh, former neolithic style probably Stakevo, Chris, Chris uh, in Transdanubia today, Hungary, and expanded uh, during a time of, um, let's say, uh, getting better climate, um, rapidly through Europe. Uh, so maybe in three to five generations, let's say uh, 100 years, um, they arrive uh, the Rhine and later on um, westward to France and yeah, you see. They prefer um, the fertile soils of Rus and um, that's somehow logical because they are the first farmers in Central Europe and um, bring uh, their animals with them and even the cereals. Even uh, the new genetic analysis say uh, all, all this stuff is originated in Palestine or in the Fertile Crescent, um, so they brought it with them. Yes, uh, Alexander told you already, um, if you have a look on the houses, you see that um, they are very much standardized, so um, they were even, let's say, included in this Neolithic pack uh, package they brought in and um, have an average size, so the so-called longhouses of about 30 meters and maybe uh, 6 to 8 meters wide and uh, are the same for several hundred years. Then we have the pottery um, the or ornamentation of the pots or vessels uh, is at least in the beginning very uniform too, but later on split it in several um, regional styles during the younger phases. So we could, it's in your term, say it's, it's already maybe uh, li liquidation or liquid. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> But, however, so his very important site of Hexham shows us, for example, that even the uh, differentiated uh, styles of the younger LBK are still in contact. So we find here the wear out of several um, regions outside of Hexham. All in all, the end is near. Um, so-called crisis of the LBK in the end we are still discussing. Um, once again Haxheim is um, a probable ritual place with several hundreds of probable sacrificed people and second we have um, some hinds of warfare, some mask graves and massacre places like Thalheim and Kilianstetten in Germany or Aspanschletz in Austria. So here we could uh, suspect that uh, the so-called crisis uh, was a sign of um, ending petrified social structure that wasn't fit um, enough anymore. Um, yeah, let's use it as, as a picture to bow in the wind of change. Well, so far. Now 
I will show you just the so-called undetectable, because we have, um, this is an extreme uh, example of new G, new genie, yeah, is, is this right? Okay. Um, uh, but uh, I think here you can see we have more than 1,000 tribes, uh, about 830 still living languages, social structure, economies and equipment, um, by the way, are independent of this language. So you can have two neighboring uh, villages speaking different lang languages but using the same equipment and having the same economy. How can we detect such a stuff as archaeologists? Or a second one, even um, the same uh, area, um, such stuff. So very, very important for identity, the coloring of the face and so on. And uh, it means I belong to this group. Um, we can't detect it as an archaeologist because we can't dig out uh, this face painting, for example. Um, even here, uh, you can have more or less the same equipment. We would find the same uh, edges, the same stone tools and so on, but uh, we cannot detect that we have another group. The opposite side, or the other way around. Here we have written sources about the Iroquois in Northern America. Here um, still five nations, later on so-called six nations, and so we know they belong together as a Liga, but if you have a closer look, uh, most of them used uh, burial mounds, so um, putting their, their people in a sitting position into a wooden chamber and covering it with earth. But the Seneca, so one part of this Iroquois League, um, they used another way, so they put their uh, dead people on platforms in trees, something we can detect. As an archaeologist without the written sources, we would think maybe the Seneca didn't belong to this Iroquois League because they were different in a, for us, important point. Well, apples and pears, that's a, a German saying, so to compare something what is at least uncomparable. Um, typology, maybe a petrified system too, because we change um, with the arrival of pottery. Um, our system. We, here we use the stone tools, for example, to um, uh, set up the uh, term Kongomosa as a culture, but when LBK arrives, yeah, stone tools are not unimportant, but lose in this way their importance for typology, because we have something new that is more interesting for us, so vessels, this decoration, we can um, now use them, um, the shapes and uh, decorations, to create a new typological point of view, like here. Uh, just very rough. Laugat Limburg uh, is for us not as interesting now, because it's probably uh, Mesolithic or maybe some cattle herding. Um, but LBK is so-called older or early Neolithic, and then there will follow in our system the Middle Neolithic uh, with the so-called Hinkelstein, SPK, Stroke Pottery, Großgartach, Rasse, whereas um, this one have no break in between. This would be in Middle and Eastern Germany and Bohemia, parts of Bavaria. Um, the Stroke Pottery follows on the LBK and you don't have a break in between. So. Um, it's continuous. Whereas in Western Germany, um, you have first in Rhein-Hesse, uh, the Hinkelstein Hinkel style, uh, followed, um, let's say, the kind of development by Großgartach and later on Rösse. This would be uh, the system for pottery, uh, very simplified. Well, now we tend to put this uh, in blocks. Uh, so, boxes. Uh, same we had before already, and um, but keep in time, uh, keep, keep in mind that that uh, <laughs> in, yeah, but uh, keep in mind that um, the band keramic LBK um, is partly existing beside this Preußen Großgartach and uh, Hinkelstein. 
Well, to come back here, why do we think now this Pots belong to LBK styles, so belonging still to band keramic. Yeah, uh, it's just our definition. We don't know what people thought themselves about it. And why do we say the Hinkelstein people don't belong to the band keramic? They are something new. They are middle Neolithic. Um, it's just terminology. Okay. Here we show another kind of artifacts. So, so shoe last it's it's and here we would find other borders. Uh, if we use them, um, we would probably choose a border here because there, up you see, is a shoe last uh, adds with a um, drilled hole, shaft hole, and that's important because first these tools were used in a horizontal way and um, then it changed to how do you say per particular oh, um, okay. uh, this direction? Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, second one would maybe here where shoe last edges in the high version um, disappeared. They were not used afterwards. Or a third one we could set here where the so called Rössen edges uh, appeared. Um, nobody knows for what they were used, but uh, probably something with wood again. Um, but it differs from our uh, keramic um, topology. Very important, and now I have to hurry up. Uh, the houses. Yeah, we have on one hand uh, later on Rösen house where um, we have maybe several families, and the former LBK house with, so is it said, uh, one family, so called core family. I don't believe in this, but uh, anyway. Where do we have the border between these two? social important systems. So we have some um, houses in between, uh, so they differ in shape. We see a development from um, rectangular over a bit ship-like and later on uh, the classic trapezoids resin house. Sometimes combined in settlements, so on the left um, we have a uh, uh, settlement of Großgartach and Tresen, and uh, on the right we have one of uh, LBK and SBK, so very often they use the same house shapes um, but with different pottery styles. So simplified, here we have, um, so the one with the red crosses inside means that they have uh, still a lot of um, post hole rows inside, later on um, they become less, so that's the differentiation here. And if we put this in our system again, we could see border here when the first uh, rectangular houses uh, began to disappear and the shape was a little, little bit ship-like, then um, ship-like with uh, less rows of post holes, then we could have the next border here, and at least one for the typical um, Western house. Yeah, to come back uh, to the question in the beginning, when did eternity of the LBK end? Um, I would still say, okay, I use our chronology based on the pottery, and I would answer somewhere, somewhere depending on the region, between 5000 and 4700. But Combined with the other one, um, I have to give another answer, and no, I don't know. So, and thank you very much for your attention.